Okay, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about her. Hi, everybody. Today I want to talk about the transmission in the truck. When I got this truck, I was curious about what the specifications were. My buddy that works up here at the local Lincoln dealership, we ran the VIN in their service software and it spit out the specs of the truck for me. So I'm going to pull that sheet out here and we're going to look and see what kind of transmission I have, what are the rear end gears, uh, and then we're going to talk about what we're going to be working on uh, as far as the transmission today. Okay, here we go. So what we have is 2002 Econoline Cutaway 7.3 liter diesel V8 turbo transmission 4 speed auto 4 R100 diesel application. The rear end, the axle is an F2 with a 410 gear ratio. So I have a 4 R100 transmission. Now when I drive this truck, I got in a conversation a back and forth with a friend of mine uh, last spring about the transmission in the truck because I was describing to him that I have a four-speed plus overdrive transmission and he said no you don't it's a four-speed transmission that's all it is and I said well, but when I drive it it goes uh, 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 and then it goes into overdrive on top of that so it's it shifts through four gears you can easily feel it and then at 45 miles an hour if you're on light throttle it'll go into overdrive and then the, the engine rpms really drop at that point so in my mind i have a four speed plus overdrive and he was adamant saying no it's a four speed in total with overdrive included and so are any of you out there experts on the 4r100 diesel application transmission to me, it has four gears plus an overdrive. That's what I feel when I drive it. And I've been driving this truck a while now. It has four, four gears plus an overdrive. All right? So that overdrive right there, that's what we're working on today. When I bought this truck, it has a button on the shift lever. on You know, the column shift lever that you grab. And it has a button where you can turn the overdrive off. It's never worked, not since I got the truck. I guess right there on the stock too, on the shifter, when you click that button, it lights up, it says overdrive off. You know, that, that doesn't work, it never has worked. So I've never been able to disengage my overdrive. That's become a real problem for me I really experienced it when I was on my way to the Colorado campsite when I was coming from New York passed through Denver and then up the mountains uh, to the higher elevation and I really needed to come out of overdrive at the bottom of those hills so that I could keep the engine RPM the turbo spinning without that ability I have to get up to like 75 miles an hour, hit that incline and start going up and the speed just comes down, 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 because it's in overdrive. And then eventually when it gets down to, I think 50 or 55 is when it will auto downshift and kick out of overdrive and get the turbo spinning back up. That's not good because I know from my reading and my limited understanding of diesel now, bear with me here, that the exhaust gas temperature egt high temperatures is bad and the way you keep those lower is by the turbo spinning at a higher rate and when you're in overdrive and the engine is really lugging and i'm dumping a ton of fuel in that thing because i'm going up a mountain and i really got my foot in it so the engine is 
really building up a lot of heat. This is my understanding and it's bad. So clicking off the overdrive when I head into those, those steep climbs, that's what I need to be doing to keep that turbo spinning to keep the EGTs lower. And, and I get better power too coming out of overdrive. Why does my overdrive not work? Why does that button not work? I don't know. So a couple days ago, I'm sitting upstairs and I said, you know what? We're smart people. Let's figure this out, right? I'm going to take the suggestions that I got up online and we're going to see if we can't get this straightened out real quick today. I think we're going to have success. Okay, the first thing we're going to do, basic, is check the fuse. I found out that this switch has its own dedicated fuse. So we're going to take a look at that first and see what we see. Now, there's a little problem because the fuse box is right under the steering wheel and, well, there's somebody kind of taking over my seat up here. Oh, excuse me, sir. You do realize you're right. Well, maybe I can get up under there without bothering you. Are you comfortable? Okay, so it's fuse number 20. It looks good. Looks like it's okay. All right, well, that's good. Let's get that back in. All right, so the fuse looks okay, so we're going to move on now. The main issue that people are finding when the switch stops functioning is that inside the steering column, wires have split. And they say this is especially prevalent with tilt wheel vehicles because the, the column is being tilted up and back. So a lot of people are finding that these wires are severed in the steering column. So we're going we're gonna to take the cover off the steering column here and we're going to get a look at it. Okay, so it looks like we've just got some Phillips head screws. So on the underside of the steering column, you see these indentations here. This is where the Phillips head screws are. So let's get this removed. We'll get this off so we can expose the wires inside and see what we got going on. Looks like there's three of them. So right here on the stock, it's got a flat spot so you can put an open end wrench on there. So, okay, five millimeter on that stock of the tilt lever and you can thread it out. Look who just showed up, everybody. <laughs> Superstar. Okay, I'm not talking about you. I'm talking about her. Okay, honey. Say hi to everybody. <laughs> oh, that was a nice surprise. So let's get back to it up here. So let's see if we can get a look at the wires up in here. There's another little plastic cover. It looks like it's just a pop in. So that this, um, you know, the vinyl or the little rubber like cover for the column itself just snaps in place. So now I can see the wires that come from that stem. Let me show you what we're looking at here. So these wires right here go inside of this stem and then up to the, the overdrive switch. So as I just Kind of, I mean, they're very taut, like there's no slack to pull them out farther. But I think that there's possibly damage on them. So here's a close-up. Uh, this is on my cell phone video. Bear with me here. It does better close-ups. You can see how the wires are frayed right there. They've worn through. And this is the common, common failure point on this part. Okay, big day. Finally got the part that we need to fix 
the overdrive button. This was a long road. The first one I ordered off eBay, I got messaged by the seller the next day saying they were out of stock. So I canceled that order, ordered one from another seller. It took about six days to get here. It showed up and it was in worse condition than the one I'm taking out. It was a used part. So I'm returning that to him for a refund and I ordered this new replacement stock. I gotta switch over my rubber boot and install this. So we're gonna pull the existing one off of the steering column, switch the boot over and get this one installed. So from what I understand, to remove this, you can see this pin right here that goes through and it has like a spring clip on it. So from what I understand, you push up on this, you get some side cutters under this pin and you can pull it right out. So we're going to do that now. Got it. Excellent. Uh, okay. So here's the old one. I hope you can see where the wires are compromised right there. And I, you know, I'm I can see copper of the wire, and I'm sure that's what caused this not to work. Add it on. All right. Well, let's get this installed. That. There. All right. Took a little coaxing. She's in there. That's it. It's lighting up like it's working. Okay. All right. So there's the new shift stem. Definitely says overdrive. It's very bold printing. Nothing like the factory one see the difference in the writing so the one that I ended up buying it's a doorman and if you guys that do car work you know doorman they make replacement parts some of them are garbage some of them are okay I'm hoping this one turns out to be okay so far it, it fits and it's specced for this um, vehicle a lot of others but this was one of the vehicles. This is a three wire. Some of these come with just two wires going into the plug. So make sure, um, look at your plug on the one you're removing and see if it's three wire or two wire because there's two versions of these three wire or two wire in the plug. So I really don't like the fact that it's stamped made in China right there. I'm going to see if I can get out a Sharpie and maybe cover that up. That looks terrible. All right, so I'm going to get the rest of these plastic pieces put on here. And then we're going to fire it up and go for a drive. So I've got the overdrive button pushed. So overdrive is off.
Okay, everyone. Well, thanks for watching the video. This repair on a scale of difficulty from 1 to 10, I would call this about a 3. You only need basic hand tools and uh, just a limited knowledge of how to do mechanics. It's really not that difficult. And if you're out there and you're driving an E-Series truck and your overdrive button does not work, this is the fix. That shift lever, the new one, it was about $53. Uh, you can order them on Amazon. You can actually get them from most auto parts stores. Uh, it's a really common replacement part. So there'll be a link in the description for the Amazon link to it. Uh, thanks everyone for watching. Everybody take care. Be good. We'll see you again really soon.